Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And to all of my returning OGs, what's up, y'all? So welcome to February 2020, yeah? A very, very happy birthday to all my Aquarians out there. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to the February Pisceans. We will be moving into your season next, yes? So um, with that said, I do want to mention, first of all, I want to say that this is the intro and you will find a, um, a timestamp pinned in the comments section that will get you straight to the reading. So if you're watching multiple readings and you don't want to listen to the intro over and over again, you can use that timestamp. I do recommend, however, that everybody listen to the intro at least once because there is some information that you may really need or may be privy to, may want to be privy to, that you would miss had you not listened to the intro. Yeah. So with this being Aquarius season, I do want to mention that the reading for Aquarius could very well be a collective energy, a collective reading. However, it is intended to be for those who are looking for guidance guidance for the sign of Aquarius because we are in that season. I do feel like this could be a reading for you generally. So maybe you might want to watch that reading just to see how it applies to you and what it could mean for your life moving through Aquarius season, just like I did with Capricorn last month, um, even though I did mention that maybe I wanted to do a separate reading so that your readings don't get hijacked with collective energy. Hi <laughs> um, it didn't necessarily happen that way this month. I'll see. Um, but if you guys if you guys find that you know you might want an actual reading please let me know for the month of, or for the season that we're moving in i would love to know i'd love to hear that from you yeah um okay so these these readings are general and they are timeless so because they're general readings um you know just take what resonates everything is not going to resonate for everyone and this may not even be the reason for you if if you're hearing listening to this and it's just not fitting it's not making sense then please don't try and fit anything into your life that doesn't belong there naturally okay and also keep in mind that this is a general reading i'm channeling for thousands of people so um you know not everything is going to necessarily resonate with you all the time okay so just keep that in mind also these readings are timeless so just because it is dated for the month of february and i'm channeling energies for the messages for the month of february for you it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you during the month of february this could be messages that come forward to you that spirit wants you to know at this time but it's not something that doesn't actually manifest or happen for some time down the road okay so just keep that in mind i am available for private readings all the information is found in the description box below this video um, you can also find me on uh, social media. I'm on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. I'm also on Instagram at Divine underscore Conversations. I do welcome you to reach out to me there. However, if you are looking to book a personal reading, I do not recommend that you use Facebook. Um, I don't even really recommend that you use Instagram. However, Instagram is a more viable option. I am able to get to the messages more quickly, but my dm situation is just full of all kinds of messages so there's still a possibility that i might miss your inquiry and with that said even if you were to say to reach out on instagram for a personal reading i'm still going to defer you back to email so if you would like to get a personal reading with me check the description box below my email can be found there along with all of the readings that i offer their description and their prices and then email me directly. My email address is divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. But again, that can be found in the description box. Again, I am going to, even if you were to reach out on Instagram, I am still going to defer to your email address because I would at least need your email address to send you an invoice for the reading. So you're better off just skipping a step and emailing me, emailing me directly and I'll get you set up for a personal reading. Yeah? Cool. So the Oracle deck that we're using for this month is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I really, really enjoyed using this this um, this deck this month. Um, it was a deck that was provided by a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this in. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are interested in donating Oracle decks or Tarot decks that you would like to see used on the channel, I do have a PO box that the information for that can be found in the description box as well. Um, if you are going to send a tarot or oracle deck, you might just want to email me really quick and really and check in to see if I have that deck yet, um, so that you know we're not you're not kind of wasting money sending a repeat deck. Okay, um, but the one thing I want to say about this deck is that 
uh, of this Oracle deck is that the author speaks in first person kind of often. So just keep that in mind when I'm saying, when I'm reading through the, the, the definition on the, in the book and I'm speaking, I'm saying things like I, it's coming from the perspective of the author herself. Okay. It's not me speaking personally. It's the author and her narrative. It's sometimes it's in the first person, but it's great. I mean, it still worked really well. The messages were beautiful for that. So I'm excited to, for you to guys, for you guys to see them. And for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering, I'm not the type of reader that's looking into the situation to be nosy. My intention with these readings here is to bring forward the best messages for you that you need to hear at this time so that you can make a better decision for your life moving forward so that you can have a greater opportunity to be more discerning for your life and for the where you want to go and potentially what could be coming on down the pipeline for you. If at any moment you find that the, something is resonating with you and you don't quite like the way that sounds, you don't want to continue manifesting with that or manifesting that, you have the opportunity to change that manifestation by changing your thought process, then changing your beliefs and changing your alignment to the situation, okay? So just keep in mind, for those of you that are here trying to snoop, trying to get into people's minds, thinking that I'm trying to get into somebody's head, I'm not your guy, all right? There are plenty of people that are out here that may be doing that, but I'm not here for that. Also understand that I do not base my channelings on love specifically. If love comes out, then love comes out. I am not resistant to that. However, if you're looking for specific love readings, then this is probably not the, the channel for you. I do have moments where I will do uh, you know, a love live session here or there, but ultimately the focus of my channel or the focus of Divine Conversation is to bring you greater guidance and understanding about, well, to bring you greater guidance, of, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring you greater understanding about what is going on in your life, the energies that are surrounding you, and then bringing you guidance in, in terms of handling those energies and making the best decisions for yourselves. Yes? Okay, I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mwah. Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading for February 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So your pre-shuffle energy, this is pretty good. Um, and this is actually leading me back to the reading that we did, that I did for you for January. Um, and in January, there was an energy of being in, I want to say be, what I want to hear. What, what, okay. What I'm hearing and what I want to say is being in alignment with uh, your higher self or a truer version of yourself here. And I remember specifically there was one point in that reading for January in which I was saying like, you know, you're, you're in an energy, you're in a kind of feisty energy where it's like you're you're aggressively um holding boundaries or or laying down the law and anyone that doesn't seem to want to get it, you're just going to keep using that stinger man like i'm gonna i'm gonna hold you in my my my, my claws and i'm gonna fucking sting you pin like until you fucking get it like these are my boundaries so what you have in your overall energy so far is the seven of wands with the ten of cups okay so you're holding some sort of I feel like you're holding some sort of vision for yourself or at least <laughs> 2020 vision or at least you are holding some sort of boundaries in terms of making space for or or, or complete I'm hearing completing your 10 um, that could be ro romantic but anything that is um, emotionally wish fulfilling um, emotionally ultimate emotional fulfillment, you're holding your boundaries, you're holding your own in terms of that with the seven of wands and 10 of cups. Overall energy is the ace of cups. Now, this is this could be one of two things or it could be both of these things. The first thing that I thought or I picked up on with this ace of cups is a sense of unconditional love for the self. And that's what's helping you to hold these boundaries here, seven of wands and 10 of cups or seven of wands, hold this boundaries in terms of whatever it is you're looking for or desiring in the 10 of cups. Also, this ace of cups could be love that you're holding for another person. Okay. All right, Scorpio. I really like that. I really like that quite a bit. The wheel of fortune just caught my attention at the bottom of the deck. So yeah, there's a lot of karmic change that's happening for you as you maintain these boundaries in terms of whatever this 10 of cups energy is for you. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to give this one more shuffle for you, Scorpio, and then we will get into the rest of your reading here. All right. Here we go. Huh. 
high spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Scorpios, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of February 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Scorpio. I'm going to give this five shuffles here. One. Two. Four more Scorpios. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. For the month of February 2020. Three. Four. From a Scorpios and five for you, Scorpio. All right, so check it out. Um, I am seeing some color for you, Scorpio. The first color that I was seeing is green, and I was actually seeing that for Libra as well. You may be, you may be a um, Scorpio, a Libra Scorpio cusper, whatnot, whatever. Um, but there's this is a very heart centered energy, all right. And Libra was coming through that from coming from that same place of heart center, your heart chakra and all that, which makes perfect sense with the 10 of cups and ace of cups that came out in your pre-shuffle. Yeah. You Scorpio are going about it a little more differently than I would say Libra would in terms of your, it, it, feel, it does feel like you're being quite aggressive here. At least you have a very strong, maybe even, maybe this aggression that I'm picking up on is more passion but like literally aggressively holding your own here, continuing to aggressively hold your own in some way. And that could be something that you're needing to do in terms of like for your own self. It may not necessarily be that you're expressing that towards outwardly towards other people. It may, but may be an effort of, for you to keep your own mind in check, to keep your own self on this path, on potentially this straight and narrow, if you want to call it that. Okay, overall energy for you. Damn, Scorpio. Eight of Pentacles. I'm getting two things with this. First, I'm getting that you're doing the hard work, you're being consistent, you're doing the labor. Also, this also feels like a past energy, like you've been consistently working towards this, potentially for a very long time, maybe for even, I wanna say, for some of you, maybe the last eight months. I'm, in, I'm picking up on that actually quite specifically for someone out there. It's like over the last eight months is when you've been really putting forward some sort of conscious effort to make some sort of change in your life and being quite diligent about it, quite consistent about it. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Scorpio, you are a fixed sign. So it's going to be easy, easier for you to a certain extent in terms of following through with a consistent plan over a long period of time with that fixed energy of yours, okay? Eight of Pent underneath the Eight of Pentacles, ho, oh, there you are, Scorpio, death but also transformation. You've really been working on this transformation. Underneath death, you have, you've got justice. Check it out, Scorpio. Libra got this same card in the same exact position. So you really could be a Leo, uh, not a Leo, a, um, a Libra Scorpio cusper. You may have Libra and or Scorpio in all, any anywhere in this sun moon rising venus or jupiter this also could be a situation in which like in like say the western system you're like a scorpio moon or something like that and in the east or in the eastern system you would be like the libra you know what i mean because that shifts a little bit so if this resonates with you i would highly recommend that you maybe check out the libra reading as well because i feel like this is a very similar energy especially with justice coming out in the same exact position and let me tell you guys i went through a process of reshuffling the cards right after libra i did that reading and then i shuffled three times and then i pulled your pre-shuffle energy and then you watched me shuffle here multiple times before i pulled your energy and here is that same card in that same position you really might want to check out that libra reading underneath justice is the knight of swords well there's that aggressive energy that i was picking up on for you here okay um and it's re it's <laughs> there could be an energy for some of you where it's like you're ready to fight at the drop of a hat or at the drop of a dime like don't fuck with me don't push me don't push my buttons because i will pop off on you and that that okay all right you might want to you know 
be very conscious of that. I'm not I'm not promoting any sort of violence or anything like that. However, it's just I, I feel like you're in this energy of just like really being very defensive of what it is you're working towards and what it is you truly want out of life and really not allowing anyone to come in with no mess. At the moment that someone steps to you with some bullshit, you're about ready to, to pop, to fight, to fight back, to clap back. You know what I mean? This could be aggressive verbal communication. It could also be aggressive physical communication, physical altercations. And I would, again, I would recommend, I would highly recommend that you abstain from any sort of violence okay okay but this is a defensive energy i would rather that you keep this knight of swords energy as a defensive rather than an offensive energy right aggressively defending yourself when need be wow all right scorpio so let's get into the rest of the reading here for you first set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading first oh i'm sorry first half second half of your reading you could look at this as the first half second half of your month but just take it as it resonates yes first set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here scorpio you have the king of wands very interesting so this is an energy for you scorpio this is it and yeah you really might want to check out that libra reading because the libra reading started off in the pre-shuffle energies with the king of wands in reverse okay but now here scorpio you have the king of wands upright and what this feels like for you is an energy of being solid and confident in yourself and knowing exactly what it is that you want and not allowing anyone to tell you anything about that like you don't like the king of wands like, it's like Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't give a fuck, right? King of Wands is going to do what King of Wands is going to do, regardless of what you have to say or what you think about it. This can be a negative energy. It can be a narcissistic energy, but that's not what I'm getting here. I'm getting a sense of confidence and being really sure of yourself and knowing what it is that you want and not allowing anyone to tell you that you can't have it. King of Wands is coupled with <laughs> the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups. And it's like, this is your wish fulfillment. This is your satisfaction here. Again, Libra got this card as well. So you really might want to, come on, there we go. You really might want to check out that Libra reading. But see, this is this is the satisfaction. And the, and the thing that I'm getting from this Scorpio that is strongest for you is that is by you being in this King of Wands energy of just being sure of yourself, maybe even finally knowing exactly what it is you want and being willing to go after it, that is satisfaction enough that is rewarding enough i mean obviously there's going to be a payoff for it once you really get what it is you're going for but right now i'm feeling like the the, the nine of cups energy the satisfaction the witch fulfillment is just finally reaching this point where it's like no i know exactly what it is what I, that i want and i don't care what anyone else, else has to say about it i know that's right scorpio second set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading you have strength now this is also an now this is good this is really good because what i'm getting because you know this this king of wands energy can be fairly narcissistic right very ego driven but now that you have strength here it's an energy of keeping your ego in check and also what i'm getting with this is having the strength to be who you are and not give a flying fuck what anyone has to say about it that's a really strong energy that's coming for through for you scorpio strength is coupled with the ace of pentacles so this is also the, the restraint that you would need to start some sort of new cycle maybe even to make some sort of offer you could um, especially with that ace of cups and ten of cups that came out in the pre-shuffle you really could be in an energy of wanting to make some sort of romantic offer to someone or some sort of offer of commitment to someone or if it's not romance and love that you're concerned with it could just be whatever is emotionally fulfilling for you this is with strength and the ace of pentacles here this is that step that you need to take or that offer that you need to make in order to get the ball rolling in that field or whatever that is for you move it start moving towards that whatever that ultimate ten of cups is for you this is having the strength and the egoic balance to do what is right to do no to, to do what you know you have to do in order to move forward towards what it is you've been working towards with this eight of pentacles here your challenge in the first half of your reading scorpio the queen of pentacles now that was my stomach if you heard <laughs> um queen of pentacles is your challenge here 
you really could be trying to approach someone that would be maybe a divine counterpart, um, someone that is a queen of pentacles energy. They may be, they may feel like they're unapproachable. This could be someone that really, know, really knows their worth and is not willing to take anything less than they know that they're worthy of. And that could be a challenge for you. It's a healthy thing though. It's a healthy challenge to have because it's really causing, it's really giving you an opportunity to really step up to the plate and show and show who you truly are like you know i feel like i feel like there's there was potentially some sort of um negative history with this person this queen of pentacles energy um that is needing to be overcome it may have already you may have already overcome it to a certain extent but there may still be like there are still a few more steps that need to be taken here but ultimately, Scorpio, this feels like a good challenge. This doesn't feel like it's a bad thing at all. And and I, I'm hearing, I'm I'm hearing that whomever this Queen of Pentacles is, she is receptive to your offer, given it's what she truly deserves, what she truly desires, and not anything less. And you're really being challenged to step up to the plate in offer of something like that. Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the Ten of Wands. Okay. There's a lot of burden involved with this energy. Like I said, the Ten of Wands is, it feels like whatever was this past burden between you and this Queen of Pentacles. But the challenge here, Scorpio, I feel like for you is that you really need to release the burdens, release all of the, the worries, the fears, or the past circumstances that you carry in terms of this individual and allow yourself to step into a nice a, a new cycle with a clean slate. And I I really want to I really want to reiterate that. You Scorpio need to be the one to allow yourself to step into this new cycle with a clean slate. As long as you're willing to accept the you know the lessons from the past and do do better in the future and move forward, that's literally all this queen of pentacles is asking you for. That reciprocity, that 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 energy of being willing and able to learn from your mistakes and grow and do better in the future. You don't have to take all of this baggage into this new cycle with you. You have, to, quite frankly, you need to release it. Okay. You would even need to release it in order to make this offer to this Queen of Pentacles. She's not going to accept anything like that from the past from you. So it's really, it behooves you to release. That. Okay. Okay. Closing message or potential outcome, Scorpio, in the first half of your reading, you have. Wow. Okay. So now we hit the Five of Pentacles. Interesting. You know, this Five of Pentacles and this King of Wands energy are in direct opposition to each other. So I guess some of you may be having trouble really stepping into your King of Wands status. It may be that maybe you were a King of Wands in the past, but you were a negatively aspected one. So you um, you were very narcissistic. You were the player. You 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 played games a lot. You were very egocentric, very selfish. Um, and it could be that you know you want to be a really confident and strong individual, but. You, there may be some fear that you could slip back into that narcissistic energy. But what I'm getting also with the Five of Pentacles here is that you need to really just believe in yourself and not give in to the fears of being inadequate. That's what I'm really perceiving this Five of Pentacles energy as for you. There is a fear of inadequacy. Lack of self-confidence, lack of self-belief, which again is in direct opposition to that King of Wands that came out the first in the first half or in the first, um, yeah, the first half of your surrounding energies. So your wish fulfillment, your satisfaction comes from you stepping into this confident King of Wands energy. Do not allow yourself to slip into this Five of Pentacles, this doubt, this fear, this 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 feelings of of inadequacy. Okay, Five of Pentacles is coupled with. The Ace of Wands. So you know which which direction you want to move in here. But it could be an energy where you feel less than confident. You really need to work with 
this King of Wands energy to really build your self-confidence here, to remove any sort of lack of confidence. And if it, and you're, you're feeling really confident here with the Ace of Wands, or I'm sorry, you have um, inspiration towards moving something, moving towards something with the Ace of Wands, but it's that Five of Pentacles energy that keeps creeping up saying, oh, I don't know if I have enough to offer. Is this, is this passion that I have enough to give? Of course it is. This is a really contradictory energy, Scorpio. <clears throat> I guess what I want to say here is focus on the inspiration, not on the lack. Build up your confidence is what I'm hearing. Okay, let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Scorpio. We have, oh, you see, I should have said it when I thought of it, but we have the Eight of Swords now. So this is that energy that I was picking up on where you're feeling trapped. You're feeling like you can't do it. It's like you want to move forward, but you f feel like you can't. This is your mind getting in the way. This is your ego getting in the way. And I think I was picking up on this Eight of Swords energy when I was talking about the Queen of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. But exactly, because what I was saying here is you, you, you need, you want to make an offer. You want, um, you want to make an offer. You want to move forward towards like a counterpart, queen of pentacles type energy, someone that really understands their worth and is not willing to take anything less than that from anybody, not just you, but from anybody. So you have got to release yourself of the burdens that keep you from moving forward with that. You have got to be the one, only you can release yourself from the Eight of Swords energy, this mental prison, this mental entrapment. <laughs> Only you can help protect against forest fires. Forest, the forest fires being the forest fires of your own mind, right? You have to release this, you release yourself from this mental cage that you're in, Scorpio. You're, it, you see, it's interesting because on the, in, in the external, you're projecting or you're, you're portraying all of this confident, strong energy, but inside or internally, there's still a little bit of that lack of self-confidence that's going on here, which is perfectly normal. Eight of Swords is coupled with, yep, yes, the devil. This is literally what is keeping you in this Eight of Swords energy, the devil, fear, anxiety, illusion. Maybe even a sense of codependency. So you could be, actually, you really could be working through uh, codependent tendencies right now. And for, if you're a masculine individual here, what I'm getting specifically, and, and it, please understand when I say masculine or feminine individual, I'm speaking to energy. I'm not talking about gender, okay? So you could be a woman and just very dominantly masculine in your energy. But for the masculine here, your codependency comes in terms of needing your feminine to need you in certain ways, to needing your feminine to be codependent on you or like your feminine counterpart or whomever would be the counterpart to you, regardless of like twin flame status or whatnot, whatever. That's not, everybody has masculine and feminine energy within them and all relationship dynamics have some level of masculine counterpart to feminine counterpart, whether you're a twin flame or not. So no, this is not a specific twin flame message, but... Um, it's like you, this masculine here, it, your codependency comes in the form or is expressed in the form of requiring any sort of uh, feminine counterpart to be codependent upon you for certain reasons, for certain elements. And specifically here, this could be a situation in which you have an interest in someone that is extremely independent. But in a healthy way, in a good way, and that may that might be intimidating to you. That might be an in, a, a situation in which it's like, well, I don't even know how to approach this person. What is it that I could even offer this person? Strength with the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, but check it out, Scorpio. The devil has no power over you unless you continue to hand it over. Yeah, these two people are chained to the devil here. But they could slip out of that anytime they want. It's not like those chains are so wrapped direct, tightly around their head that they can't slip it off of their necks. But you, just like with this Eight of Swords energy, you have to choose to release yourself or remove yourself from that burden. You have to choose to drop that burden. Second set of surrounding energy, Scorpio, in the second half of your reading, you have, ah, the Six of Pentacles reciprocity giving back what was given to you you could be in an energy of trying to figure out how to make some sort of situation reciprocal 
where it may have been really unbalanced in the past. But this is also saying, this Six of Pentacles is also giving an energy of needing to give that self-care to yourself as well, or needing to perform that self-care for your own self. Like, this is not just about giving to others. This also is about giving to yourself. And in some circumstances, what I'm picking up on here for you is that um, what would be reciprocal here is to give your own self that care, that love, that respect, and do practice the self-care to help you build your own confidence you have got to take care of number one first before you can take care of anybody else and who's number one here scorpio none other than your own self okay that's a very strong message that's coming through with that six of pentacles for you six of pentacles is coupled with the ace of swords truth clarity honesty it's like there is also an energy here where you know that you're ready to give back to someone or at least you're willing to give back to someone this could be an energy of trying to figure out how to do so. Again, that question of what could I even offer here? What would I need to offer? You could have recently come into an understanding of what that need is, or you could be trying to figure it out. But the Ace of Swords does represent an epiphany, an aha moment, that light bulb, mental inspiration. Okay. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Scorpio, you have... Oh, the Queen of Cups now. Very interesting. You have two queens in your challenge. The Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. Interesting. What I'm getting from this Queen of Cups is approaching someone who is very in tune with their emotions. That could be really intimidating for you, Scorpio. Which is interesting because you, as a water sign, you know, you you can be quite emotional but um, and even psychic or intuitive, um, but that maybe this is a situation for someone where you're, you have a hard time dealing with not only your emotions, uh, uh, let alone the emotions of someone else. And this person represented by the Queen of Cups here, this could be you. I feel like it's another person though. It's like just like that Queen of Pentacles. And this actually could be the same person, the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. Someone that is very solid, stable, and secure in their own right and knows their worth and is not willing to accept anything less from anybody, let, let alone just you, but anybody, okay? It's, it's not just specific to you. And then also someone who is very maybe intuitive, psychically inclined, or at least is very well in touch with their emotions and maybe not afraid to express them. This could be an energy of you trying, your challenge here with this Queen of Cups energy is approaching this person and treating them well, not um, not taking advantage of them. Because the Queen of Cups can be an individual when she's negatively aspected. She can be an individual that has like shit for boundaries and is uh, just allows herself to be an open vessel of abuse, okay? And, and so, but I feel like Scorpio, your challenge here with this individual is trying to find a way to approach this person to help to, to to not feel like or be perceived as if you're abusing this individual or trying to abuse this individual especially with this king of wands energy here because that king of wands energy can be can be seen as very narcissistic and even opportunistic okay queen of cups is coupled with the moon wow um all about emotion here all about emotion you could be dealing with a cancerian because the queen of cups and the moon does represent cancerian energy doesn't have to be though in tar in the tarot you know officially the moon represents pisces but also the cancer is ruled by the moon so that's why it sometimes can represent the moon uh cancer scorpio there's an energy of um illusion or fear surrounding this person or or this could be your own inner emotional state like you could be in an energy of really trying to understand your own emotions maybe having fear surrounding your own emotions however the strongest message i'm getting here is to follow your intuition your intuitive guidance is right here so regardless of what this queen of cups energy is if this is like your own internal emotional balance and awareness or if this actually does represent another person in your life 
that you may want to make some sort of offer to of love and commitment, you really need to trust your intuitional gu intuitive guidance here because it's on point. I mean, you're a Scorpio anyway. So Scorpio is one of the most psychic, right? All like water signs are quite psychic or at least strongly intuitive. So you really need to trust your intuition here. That's the strongest message I'm getting, Scorpio. You've got to trust your intuition in terms of, your intuitive guidance in terms of approaching this Queen of Cups energy, okay? Closing message or potential outcome for the second half of your reading, Scorpio. Oh, yeah. There's that Ten of Cups again. Beautiful. You're on your way to this, Scorpio. So hold tight. I'm hearing, hold tight, it's going to be a bumpy ride, but you're getting there. Or maybe it's already been a bumpy ride. But, I mean, this is your closing message or, or potential outcome here. So <laughs> you're moving towards a Ten of Cups situation. And this is the second time it's come out here. So it came out in your pre-shuffle, and now here it is again. Ten of Cups is coupled with the Hermit. Okay, so... By you continuing to do this work in terms of um, in terms of internal soul searching with the hermit, you're actively moving towards the Ten of Cups energy. And what I'm getting is like you're doing internal excavation, like you're really clearing out your internal space, really figuring yourself out, really moving forward with, you know, what your heart's desire is, doing the work that you need to do in order to align yourself with that Ten of Cups. This also could be Virgo energy because um, uh, the Hermit does represent Virgo. Um, but ultimately, you're doing this internal work that is actively leading you towards uh, the manifestation of whatever your Ten of Cups is. It can be a romantic relationship, it could be a family situation, or it could just be a circumstance that is extremely emotionally fulfilling for you. Beautiful, Scorpio. Beautiful. And you reaching this, this Ten of Cups energy is absolutely dependent on this internal work that you seem to be consistently doing, especially since the Eight of Pentacles is the first card of your overall energy, and you're going through a transformation with death, and it's bringing justice into your life. Whoops. This is excellent, Scorpio. All right, last shuffle, and then we will get your Oracle Guidance for the month of February 2020. Okay. Here we go. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February. What oracle guidance do you have for Scorpio for this month? Please, Spirit. I'm going to let it fall out naturally. You got two cards as well. Okay, so you really, you really might want to check out that Libra reading because Libra got two cards of oracle guidance also. You have Snow Moon, card number 30, Purity, and you also have Queen of the Moon, Sovereignty, card number 41. So let's start with 30. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Purity. Look for the simplest and cleanest solution. Understand your motives for doing what you're doing. Be as clear as possible in your communication. The quote here is, I know why I do what I do. The word purity now seems to have a kind of loaded moral quality. Anytime I mention the word, people mostly think about how it's used in religious or in morals. I'm sorry, in religions or in morals. For example, the purity of virgins, the purity of no sex before marriage, the purity of celibacy, the purity of bloodline of certain extreme right-wing groups. No wonder we use the word with some trepidation. The purity I refer to here is the purity of the silver moon on the unmarked snow, the simple purity of intention that nature demonstrates, the purity of clean water in a mountain stream, the purity of one single purpose. 
The Cambridge Dictionary defines this kind of purity as, quote, being clean or free from harmful substances, end quote. And I guess in our world, so full of pollution and damage to the environment, that may be well hard, that may well be hard to find. However, the ancients looked at the cycles that brought ice and snow as a sort of reset button, a time when everything lay fallow for a while and brought with it a kind of simplicity. These times were hard, but if we were prepared for them, we would survive. There are good reasons to strive for a kind of positive purity in our lives, being precise with our language as a clear and as clear as we can be in our communications means fewer miscommunications and misunderstandings in our relationships and work life. Keeping our intentions pure and untainted with lower energies such as jealousy, revenge, or worthiness as much as possible means that our motivations are purer and not muddy in their reasoning. And the uh, companion stone or metal for this is clear quartz, which I use all the time. I love clear quartz. It's one of my favorite stones to use. Okay, and so finally we have card number 41, Queen of the Moon, Sovereignty. And actually, Sovereignty is perfect for you here because it really does, with the Seven of Wands energy that came out in your pre-shuffle, you're really holding your own. You're really keeping a sense of boundary here, which is really good. Okay, Sovereignty. You have sovereignty over your own life. Act with grace and confidence. You have the ability to unite disparate people and views should you choose to do so. The buck stops with you. You are powerful. Act like it. The quote here is, I reign over my own realm. Goddess of the moon, I'm sorry, goddesses of the moon are one of the oldest kinds of, of feminine divine and feature in mythologies from almost every corner of the, of the globe. From Diana of ancient Rome and the Greek Artemis to the Semitic Astarte and Hina from Polynesia, the link with the feminine divine and the lunar planet and cycles is a strong one. These goddesses, in all their myriad of forms, were extremely powerful and demonstrated to women that they, naturally, had power as well. We should strive to be the powerful queens of our own domain. Women especially have been socialized to defer, to keep small, to be quiet, and to hold a very twisted kind of service that borders on servitude. While in many first world countries, women can choose to be what they wish to be on paper, women still experience inequality in most countries in areas such as wage disparity, disparity and an imbalance of the numbers of women in government or in high level board positions. However, what has been accepted in the past is not what will be accepted in the future. A new queendom is coming. When we reign over our own lives, it is us that take on the responsibility for our own change and decisions. The Moon Queen knows that we, just under, just under the divine, are our own rulers, and as such, the buck stops here. Therefore, it is worth us investing in growing our own self-awareness, or, or I'm sorry, our own self-trust, self-care, and self-esteem in real and practical ways. We must, as any queen would, set firm boundaries to protect our queendom and those who are under our protection. This does not mean we become cruel rulers. We should always aim for benevolence, fairness, and a great love for all, as well as ourselves. It does mean we may have to push against those who do not respect our line in the sand, which is everything that I've been picking up for you in the last two months, so perfect. The companion stone or metal here is platinum. So if you want to get some platinum or some clear quartz, I highly recommend that you do so. With that said, Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. This is a really great energy for you guys. Um, I hope you have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.